Hi, everyone, and welcome to this episode of the Driving Digital Standup. I'm Isaac Sokolik, or NY Ike, on Twitter. And in this episode, I'm going to do three things. First, I'm going to break some jargon and make sure you understand what a data-driven organization is and what the future of work means. Second, I'm going to connect these two so that you can see the relationship around becoming data-driven and how that fosters a new future of work. And third, I'm going to connect to some of my writing on these subjects so you can put the learning from this video into your practices. Let's ask data from the Star Trek episode to help us define what a data-driven organization is. And what you can see from one survey, 11% of respondents say, compared to their peers, their organization makes substantially better use of data. And what are they using it for? Well, top performers are using it for driving better decisions, faster decisions, and it's impacting organizational performance. So what's going on here? Now, when I empower people in the front line of customer support and customer engagement or in operations, I provide them access to real-time data. Their teams are making the dashboards and the analytics around the decisions that they're making on a daily basis. They're more likely to make faster and smarter decisions. They're more likely to use feedback to course correct. And that's really what becoming a data-driven organization is. In a previous blog post, I shared 10 attributes of data-driven organizations. And you can get to that post at the URL starcio.com slash data-driven-1. Now let's move on and talk about the future of work. Now there are a number of definitions and frameworks tied to the future of work. I particularly like this one because of its simplicity. It starts with looking at who is doing the work and the leadership in organizations. 20 years ago, they may have been employees. Today, we rely more on partners. We do more joint developments and we work with many freelancers. We talk about how work is getting done and we're not just doing business process management. We're doing automation. We're using artificial intelligence as a way of doing end-to-end -end efficient and smart and intelligent processes. And more and more organizations are doing work globally. They're working around the clock. That's really three key elements around the future of work. I really like Gartner has a, a framework around this, and they talk about a number of different attributes of the future of work. I'm going to home in on three of them in this episode of the Driving Digital Stand-Up. Shifting talent and skills, so important in IT. Uh, digital enablement, so much important when we talk about digital transformation and what it means for the employee experience. And when we put these two together, how are we reforming the culture to be better enabled, to run faster, to make quicker decisions, to be able to be more competitive in an ever-changing world? So that's what we're going to talk about over the next few minutes around connecting data-driven organizations with the future of work. I have a post, three ways data-driven organizations enable the future of work. What you're seeing is a featured image from this post, quote from my book, Digital Trailblazer, that talks about essential transformation practices. And of course, becoming data-driven organizations, uh, pro uh, proactive data governance, and hyper-automation are on this list. And let's break this down, right? I share three examples here. Uh, first and foremost, automating data ops. And what that basically means is that many organizations have departments doing a lot of manual work to bring data in. Uh, sometimes they're departments, sometimes they're outsourced. They're bringing data sources in, they're cleansing them, they're doing manual data manipulations. This is something we're trying to clean up in data-driven organizations to improve data quality, to make sure data is more real-time and more reliable. And to bring new data sets in, we're using data prep tools. We're giving them to our citizen data scientists so that they can do discovery on new data sets, understand the value and the quality around them, do the manipulations they need for them. And they, this becomes prototypes for our data operations group to then go out and automate. Now to enable digital uh, organizations, digital enablement. What we're really talking about here is helping people in business departments be successful using the data that's available. 
I'm going to start off with a data catalog so that they know where to access data, how to use that data properly, who are the subject matter experts around it. These data catalogs typically have data dictionary, so I know what a date means or what a currency means or what the different dimensions and measures mean. So I have a dictionary, so I use them properly in my analysis. And as I create more machine learning data sets, trained data sets, tag data sets, I centralize those as well so that more people in the organization can use them in different tools for machine learning modeling. All of this is starting to change the culture, right? We're moving off of manual tools for manipulating data, things like Excel and Sheets. Uh, we're moving off of manual ways to tell stories with data, things like PowerPoint. We're starting to use tools directly as a way to capture data, dashboard them, tell stories, gain insights, and provide a much more democratized access to them. And that's what's really enabling the future of work. Now, you can see this post at starcio.com slash data dash driven dash three two and the third one starcio.com slash data dash driven dash three is all about proactive data governance and what i mean by that is the unification of three different disciplines data ops data governance and analytics through data science programs typically these are three separate groups acting independently and what i suggest in this post is bringing them all together having them focus on single problems at a time having them look at data sets at a time and that is what creates a collaboration to improve quality create governance models and also enable the analytics now coming up are the two other ways data-driven organizations enable the future of work. So here is number four. Data-driven organizations that are prepping for the future of work are using Agile as a way to formulate multidisciplinary teams. I talked about data ops, governance, citizen data science. They're bringing those disciplines in together and they're breaking down data and analytics challenges into Agile sprints. Right. In any given sprint, they might be doing some work around questions and doing dashboarding. They may be doing some modeling. They are maybe also doing some discovery work on new data sets. Right. So we're reforming the culture by promoting agile practices in multidisciplinary teams. And then we're growing that practice. We're bringing in citizen data science capabilities into multiple departments. I usually start with the marketing department. If you read chapter seven of Digital Trailblazer, I tell that story of how hard it was to bring citizen data science into financial groups, uh, but I had a tremendous amount of success starting with marketing groups, going into operations groups, and then going into finance. And this is a little bit of a story about how I've gone about doing this. Find underserved departments, lead with specific questions, and then provide guidance around how Agile works for them to work collaboratively together. You can read more about Agile and citizen data science at this post, starcio.com slash data dash driven dash four. And next up is the number five reason. Now, data-driven organizations are experimenting with machine learning, and that's going to enable the future of work, too. But they're doing more than just experimenting. They're actually bringing more and more models to production. They're analyzing large data sets that are becoming key to decision-making and really augmenting human intelligence. And they're doing this with two key technology capabilities, MLOps is pretty much the DevOps for machine learning. We're talking about automating the production pipeline. We're talking about the infrastructure so that data scientists can tear up and down cloud environments to run their experiments. Key part to enabling machine learning, but then to really scale it, to really bring models into production and to maintain them. The SDLC of machine learning is model ops, and model ops really helps you monitor machine learning and production and look for model drift and other issues. Now I have some writing around this and some video around this that you're seeing here. Again, starcio.com slash data dash driven dash five. And again, the main point here is that data-driven organizations recognize the importance of machine learning in their future. They're cultivating those capabilities and they're focused on bringing more models into production that are going to enable the future of them working together. 
So let's bring this all together, how data-driven organizations enable the future of work. And we started with three capabilities from the Gartner model, shifting talent, digital enablement, and reforming the culture. I then shared five ways data-driven organizations are enabling the future of work, automating data operations, creating data catalogs so people understand the data that they're working with. We're moving off manual tools like PowerPoint and spreadsheets and more into automated tools and analytic and storytelling tools. We're reforming the culture by bringing multidisciplinary teams data ops, data governance, and citizen data scientists into agile working groups and methodology. And then we're scaling our machine learning capabilities with ML ops and model ops. So those five capabilities align to the future of work in the Gartner model. When you bring this all together, what we're really talking about is bring these five different disciplines, data ops, agile, proactive data uh, governance, citizen data science, and model ops together, right? And that's the multidisciplinary team. And if you wanna learn more about this, I tell some of the practices around this in my book, Driving Digital. Um, that was an uh, Amazon bestseller. In my new book, um, in several chapters, I tell data stories, and that's in Digital Trailblazer. I hope you'll pick up both copies. That's our episode today in the Driving Digital Stand-Up. I hope you will subscribe to the channel and join my newsletter. Um, when you buy Digital Trailblazer, you'll get information on how to access the Digital Trailblazer community. At the end of every chapter, there are URLs to join the community for free. So I hope to see you in one of those areas. Thank you for watching and speak to you soon.